Let's turn our attention now to Nagorno-Karabakh. The French foreign minister is in uh, the capital of Armenia and he is pledging to supply military equipment to meet the defence needs that are emerging there. Now, this comes ahead of a meeting between Armenia's prime minister and Azerbaijan's president. They're meeting in Spain to try and hold some talks and make some headways for a possible peace agreement. Nearly 120,000 Armenians, virtually the entire population, have left Nagorno-Karabakh now. This has been happening in the last two weeks. Well, let's go live to our correspondent in uh, Yerevan, uh, Rehan Dimitri, who's been following this for us. Uh, Rehan, let's start with the French foreign minister who's in uh, the capital. What, what is it hoped that will be achieved by that? Well, that's right. Uh, uh, Catherine Colonna, she has arrived here on Tuesday and she said that France was ready to sign, to sign a military agreement with Armenia and to start supplying French weapons here to Armenia. She said that she was here to show her support to Armenia's territorial integrity. And uh, she also said that um, she has raised the issue with uh, the EU foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, about expanding the EU monitoring mission that has been operating here in Armenia, patrolling the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So she's saying we want to expand this mission. Uh, this is a, a show of support. Uh, there's a big uh, Armenian diaspora community living in France and these two countries uh, are in, in friendly terms. But this visit also comes off the back of a decision that was made by the Armenian parliament on Tuesday, uh, which ratified a founding treaty um, which, which means that Armenia will be under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. And this move is seen by Moscow as extremely unfriendly. Uh, Russia has already warned Armenia of consequences, and they're talking about imposing sanctions on those MPs that voted to support the Rome Statute. Uh, relations between Armenia and Russia are all-time low. Armenia feels that it was let down by Russia uh, because uh, the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh is now under the full control of Azerbaijan. And uh, Armenia says that Russian peacekeepers that were deployed there after the war three years ago did not fulfill their obligations because the entire population of ethnic Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh were forced to flee their homes. And let's talk about the peace talks that are taking place today in Spain. Armenia's Prime Minister and Azerbaijan's President are in those talks. What's the expectation? Well, uh, the, the talks will be taking place. Uh, they're planned for Thursday in Granada uh, on the sidelines of the European Political uh, Council meeting. And there's been a lot of preparation for these talks. The format will be uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan, plus France, Germany, and the EU, uh, Charles Michel, the president of the European Council. We are still hearing for final confirmations that the two leaders from the Caucasus will indeed attend and meet face to face to discuss uh, a possible peace treaty between these two countries. Um, and uh, it looks like it's going to happen. We've had confirmation from the Armenian prime minister's office saying that he will indeed be taking off uh, to Spain today. Uh, and there will be quite a lot to discuss between these two leaders. But Azerbaijan has said that now that it gained full control of Nagorno-Karabakh, it is aiming for um, a, a lasting peace in the Caucasus. So it will be quite important and interesting to see what they will, uh, uh, whether they will agree on, uh, on this peace treaty in Granada tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Rehan, thank you so much. Rehan Dimitri there. Uh